Our first presenter of Act Two is a multidisciplinary artist who acts, directs, and writes for both stage and screen. And he also serves as the in arena host for the Calgary Hitmen and is a proud member of the Six Sigma Nation. Please welcome Telly James. What's happening in Calgary? <laughs> so let me get set up. Oh, uh, that echo, yeah, I hear what you're uh, saying. That's, I mean, I should be used to it from uh, being in the dome, but it's a good warm up. Our uh, home opener is on Sunday if anybody wants to come out. <laughs> Okay, first a land acknowledgement. I'd like to acknowledge that you're all on my land. <laughs> you know, nowadays, theater companies, they make land acknowledgements, but lately I've been hearing them say that they're feeling kind of empty and superficial. Well, so are a lot of the shows that they uh, stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> so today I'm looking back at movies that resonated with me as a misfit kid, misfit city native kid, and the exit sign, while there's potential spoiler alerts for these really old movies, so if you don't want to see them, then yeah, I understand if you have to leave. So this is me with my grandparents, Patrick and Elfrida Bearhat. Some think treaty was made a long time ago, but my grandpa was born 34 years after Treaty 7 was made. 34 years ago from now, we're talking about Twin Peaks, 90210, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, so it wasn't that long, so the impacts are still being felt today. So my dad was raised in St. Mary's Residential School. He felt betrayed by his mother because in his memory, she sold him to the school for a bag of flour. My mom went a different route, but she faced many obstacles that were traumatizing for her, and as a result, they both battled with alcoholism. They did their best, though. They partied hard, but they also worked hard, so I spent a lot of time alone. TV and movies had a huge influence on me, as you could see. And uh, after a while, the balance of work and play wasn't there, so they would disappear for a week or two, and my sister and I were left at home with a VCR and two video cassettes, Beyond Thunderdome and Seven Blows of the Dragon. I would watch these movies over and over again to a point where I could recite the dialogue from memory. I learned a lot from storytelling from these movies. Seven Blows of the Dragon was the introduction to the Shaw Brothers movies, which led to me to the absolute favorite, this 36th Chamber of Shaolin, starring Garden Liu. These movies taught me the importance of self-discipline. In Beyond Thunderdome, Mad Max finally makes his hero's journey. He's driven by revenge in the first two movies, but in this scene, he sacrifices his opportunity so that the children could have a chance at life. I wanted to be that guy, the character, not Mel Gibson, because, you know, he's got his... Um, <laughs> La Bama was a movie that I watched with my family. I loved our movie nights. It meant that all was right with the world. Even though my parents had their issues, like I said, they did their best. And us Native folk related to the culture in La Bamba. We saw ourselves in these characters. The family dynamics, dynamics of Bob and Richie was something I felt. Richie was loved by everyone and supported in his dreams. Bob, on the other hand, was a bad boy and was always in Richie's shadow. My sister was Richie and I was Bob. Every family has a Bob. Even if, if your family doesn't, then it's probably you. <laughs> a lot of attention was placed on my sister. Everyone loved her, still do. Back then, I felt like I was in her shadow and didn't get any attention. I tell myself that it's because I'm so special, no one understands. But then after a while, I felt like there was something wrong with me. With little attention placed on me, I got into some shit. And around that time, I watched The Lost Boys. Before I turned 10, I was afraid to watch horror movies. And I had a strict Christian upbringing, 
where everything was sending me to hell, but that, that's a whole other talk. So I related to villains for the first time when I saw this movie, and the way the world treated the vampires looked like how non-natives treated my cousins and me when we walked around Lethbridge. Cinema and media always painted natives as the bad guys, so I embraced it. This is my favorite movie of all time. I love it because it's the first movie I watched that, to me, successfully mixed co comedy with horror. My two favorites. It made me realize that these things could coexist and had a huge influence on me when I wrote Tales from the Res, the short film. What gives this movie its charm is the characters. They reminded me of my relatives. My uncles and cousins are very comical, not only in their senses of humor, but in how they dealt with situations and problems. They're evil geniuses. So moving on, Train Spotting was a movie that made complete sense to me. I had just ended my bad boy era. I felt like Mark Renton. It also successfully blended humor with grit, which is what res life is. After seeing this movie, I wanted to tell my stories through my lens, but I got pushed back from the artsy natives who don't want to see those stories told. While pursuing a career as an actor, I was blessed with two daughters. I really wanted to be somebody that they could be proud of, but in the process of trying to achieve success, I recognized that in doing so, I was leaving my girls in the same way I was left. So I walked away to be with my family. I'm the father of the two most charming and beautiful girls who are in a better place than me and will surpass me in many ways, already have. <laughs> I knew that picture was coming up. <laughs> I gave up success in the industry so that, I, so that my girls could have a better future. After seeking revenge on whoever, I finally had my Mad Max moment. So what's next for me? My days as a full-time father are coming to an end, and I'm still an outcast. I've never felt like I belonged anywhere. And honestly, I just want to find home. But in the meantime, I'll go back to telling stories as an actor, writer, and director. And I want to tell stories for all the bobs, people struggling to find their place, those who caused a zombie apocalypse. I've seen stories through different lenses, Asian, Scottish, Australian. And now I just want to see an honest, indigenous lens. Thank you.